Hi there, I'm Rachel, and boy do I have a story for you. My algebra teacher, Mrs. Fritz, read my text messages out loud to the entire class, and she absolutely ruined my life. The thing is, these texts were not your typical day-to-day -day messages between a mother and daughter, or girl talk among friends about the cutest guy in school. I'm talking relationship-ending, secretive, and juicy stuff I hoped no one would ever find out about, especially my best friend Anna. It all started one day in the fourth period. I was sitting at my desk when I remembered that I'd forgotten to silence my phone. We're supposed to keep them in our lockers, but naturally no one ever does. I had never been caught before, so I was certain I could check it without being seen. I just wanted to sneak a glance and make sure it wouldn't go off. I discreetly pulled it from my pocket and checked the sidebar. Just as I suspected, the silent mode wasn't activated. I switched it on silent and casually slipped it back in my pocket. Crisis averted, right? Wrong. Mrs. Fritz, who up until this point had always been my favorite teacher, saw me messing with it. She came over to my desk and asked me to give her the phone. I should have run out of the classroom right then and there. Trust me, it wouldn't have been nearly as embarrassing as what followed. But I didn't. I handed her the phone, and then my life was over. See, what you should probably know is I've always had a crush on my best friend's boyfriend, Corey, until I found out he was cheating on her. I thought he was the perfect guy, so handsome and sweet. He treated Anna like a queen. And I had always been so jealous of their relationship. I mean, they were honestly the perfect couple. Everyone envied them. Homecoming king and queen, head cheerleader and quarterback of the football team type of stuff. They were that perfect. Everyone thought they'd be together forever. Including me. That all changed, though, when I walked in on him after gym class one day in the girls' locker room and saw him making out with someone else. I ran out of there like crazy, trying to forget what I'd seen. But the image was forever imprinted in my mind. Corey caught up with me and made me promise not to tell Anna. Something I'll always regret. But followed through with anyway. He fed me a bunch of lines about how stressed he'd been lately and how he and Anna just couldn't seem to make enough time for each other. I know it sounds crazy, but I actually sort of believed him. He was so convincing. I kind of felt sorry for him until a few days later when he came on to me. He cornered me at my locker and thanked me for my discretion, then kissed me so fast I barely had time to breathe. I guess he figured that since I had already caught him cheating and promised not to tell my best friend, then maybe I'd be okay with a little something on the side. Of course I shoved him away and told him to leave me alone now more determined than ever to tell Anna what a scumbag he was. And yet, I never could muster up the courage. I mean, she would hate me. Best friends aren't supposed to keep secrets from each other, especially secrets like these. I was really hoping she'd find out on her own, catch him in the act sort of thing, then I wouldn't have to be the bearer of bad news. Anna and I hung out dozens of times after all of this, and I never said a word. My guilt was eating me alive, but I couldn't tell her. Whenever I saw her and Corey together, I literally wanted to puke, but I had to keep the ruse. There was no turning back now. I had come to be pretty good at hiding the truth. Well, that was before Mrs. Fritz snatched my phone and ruined everything. Let's see what couldn't wait, she announced to the entire class after taking my phone and then clicked on the last message I received, which was from Corey. <sighs> My classmates heard everything, and I really do mean everything, including Anna, who was sitting right behind me. I didn't dare turn around. She found out about my feelings, how disgustingly perfect I always thought they were, how much I used to like Corey, what happened in the locker room, and how I promised not to tell, and the kiss. I was mortified. While she was reading the message, Mrs. Fritz herself looked shocked, probably wondering how I could do such a thing. I looked at Anna, and her face was red. She seemed angry, 
and like she was about to cry. I will never forget the look she gave me in that moment. She must have felt extremely betrayed. I couldn't take it anymore. I ran up to our teacher and tried to grab my phone out of her hand, pleading with her to stop, but she kept on reading. How could a teacher be so cruel? I mean, didn't she understand that every word was just adding to my humiliation? The boys in the class were laughing at me. The girls were whispering in between gasps. She gave me back my phone the moment Anna left her seat and stormed out of the classroom. The damage was already done. My big secret was out. I knew in my heart that there was no way I would ever recover from this. As you can imagine, my little fourth period incident was the talk of the school. It didn't blow over quickly like I hoped it would. It only intensified. Anna refused to speak to me, and Corey was on to the next girl in no time, almost as if Anna had never existed. My other friends couldn't trust me either, and I ate my lunch alone in the art room. It was a terrible way to spend the last few months of our senior year. But what could I do? Nobody wanted to be around me. But what really mattered to me was Anna. I tried for weeks to get her to hear me out, but she wanted nothing to do with me. My best friend since kindergarten was giving me the silent treatment, and it hurt more than you could possibly know. How could I have betrayed her like that? Why did I make that stupid promise to Corey? I kept telling myself that I was only trying to spare her the pain, but it never made me feel better. No matter how I tried to spin it, I was in the wrong. She must have really believed that I had had a thing going on with her boyfriend. After what seemed like years of begging her to listen to me, Anna finally ended her silence and agreed to meet me after school. It took a lot of convincing to get her to meet me, but it was nice to be able to talk to my best friend again. I broke the ice by admitting how sorry I was, and told her everything about the exchange with Corey in the locker room. Amazingly, the mystery girl he kissed was never revealed in the text messages everyone had heard, and I was hoping that by giving Anna her name, I'd get back in her good books. For the moment, it seemed to work. I told her it was Martha, an older student who was notorious for breaking up relationships. Anna absolutely despised Martha, having had plenty of run-ins with the voluptuous beauty before. They can have each other, she told me. And I was so happy to see that my best friend was coming to her senses. She didn't need Corey and would be much better off without him. Once a cheater, always a cheater. Besides, graduation was coming up and pretty soon he'd just be a bad memory. I could tell things were starting to shift between us and that my best friend was back. Thank you for watching this video. Hi, I'm Jeremy, and I have a wonderful family of two loving parents who are always willing to do anything to make me happy. Sometimes they argue and sometimes they scream. Hmm, honestly, it's my mum who argues and screams, but whatever, they're amazing and have always supported me. And for that, I'm forever thankful. Without them, I wouldn't have succeeded to become the captain of the football team or the top student in my science class. For all these reasons, I never questioned what I know about my parents, up until what happened a few weeks ago. Despite being this amazing to me, my dad has always clearly been different from other dads of my friends. I know that a lot of people expect dads to be tough, great at handiwork and football lovers, but my dad has never been any of those things. He's quite scrawny and softly spoken, never wanting to get into a fight or even an argument. I never found that an issue, but still, that didn't mean I never saw. As a teenager, hearing people talk about my dad behind his back always made me very frustrated. That never stopped. Whenever he comes to school to pick me up, I hear my classmates laughing and mimicking the way he talks or walks. That made me angry. Tom, another football player, asked me once, Dude, are you sure that guy isn't your mum? My dad could kick his ass." I tried to ignore it and walk away. These guys are clearly just mad that our team had crushed them, I told myself. Then a few other guys had started to crowd around, blocking my path as I tried to leave. It was then the second guy, Andrew, chimed in, Has your dad come out as gay yet? Well, 
it was along those lines. But there was a lot more swearing and some sharper words were used. Before he could say anything else, my fist had sunk into his jaw. I left the school quickly, before even comprehending what I'd done. To nobody's surprise, my parents and I were called into the principal's office the next day. It turned out that Andrew wasn't too happy. His parents were very angry and joined my parents in the principal's office to learn more about what had happened. Andrew's mother was very annoying. She kept staring at my father and then whispered something to her husband's ear and they both laughed. The whole situation started to get on my nerves even more than before. Then the principal started to talk and preach about being peaceful and not to use violence. But I couldn't hear what he was saying. I was totally focused on my dad, trying to read his facial expressions and making an effort to find the right words to say. Can you imagine the whole situation? Imagine you're in my shoes and have to confront your dad in front of all these people that you don't like. The principal asked me to explain to everyone in the room why on earth I acted violently. I didn't want to say anything. Then my dad requested an answer from me, only to be followed by my mother demanding me to utter. My dad asked me the same question again, and I seriously wish the ground would swallow me up. What should I say? How can I tell this to my dad? I had many unanswered questions in my head. My anger, sadness, frustration were all growing way beyond my limits. When my dad stood up and said angrily that he is not leaving the office before he knows the truth, the whole situation was choking me at that moment, and I exploded. Within one second, I rose on my feet, looked my father in the eyes, and screamed at him, Tell me, why do you do all this? Why don't you act like the other dads? Where's your manhood? Do you really want to know what happened? My friends called you gay. They all call you gay. My parents looked at each other and lowered their heads. Angrily, I asked, why are they silent? What is it, Dad? No response. Just silence. I grabbed him from his arm and asked him again, this time louder, is it true? Are you gay? I could see him holding back the tears, and he didn't answer. I was shouting at him again, hysterically, and asking him to tell me the truth. When he stood up and said louder than ever, Yes, I am gay. I was speechless. I couldn't grasp anything. I could only think of how my father has lied to me. He betrayed me. He will never earn my trust again. I thought of all the scenarios I'll face and the responses I will hear from my friends from the moment they know the truth about my dad. That exact moment, I felt like I'm losing consciousness. I looked around. Everything was blurry. I could only spot the faces of Andrew, his parents, the school principal and the counsellor all looking at me and grinning. That shocked me. How is it possible that this whole situation of my personal emotional roller coaster felt like an entertaining movie scene for them to just watch and grin? Without looking back, I slammed the door hard and left quickly. I felt very fragile and weak in that moment for exposing my reality and bitter emotions to some remorseless people. Despite my shock, I learned my lesson. Our personal life is called personal for a reason. I'm still adjusting to my new reality, but whether my dad is gay or not, it's no one's business. At least I have a wonderful father who loves me more than anything else in life. 